Hi, I'm Tim, or Shmi150, as you know me on YouTube. And if you're wondering, that is a reference to a video I uploaded 10 years ago this month. The first video ever on the Shmi150 channel where I talked with you guys while driving at the time my Aston Martin V8 Vantage Roadster, the car that would go on to be the first to wear the Shmi Mobile name, and the car that today I have bought and we are going to collect. Yes, I have bought it back after going to test drive the car a month ago with the current owner he made me an offer i couldn't refuse to buy the car to add it back to the collection to bring it here to the Schmuseum. so today having only just recently picked up the amg gt black series with just 67 miles on the clock we're going to head over to the vantage that means an hour or so away from here to go and collect it and later on bring it back home where this whole adventure began buying the first ever schmemobile <laughs> If you're wondering what's going on here, we've been marking out an approximate floor plan for how the offices are going to be installed, from having a reception room at the entrance, all the way through to some storage and the facilities towards the other corner, as well as having some stairs up to the mezzanine, and of course the office space itself and where the doors are going to go. And there's more of that and the progress that we're making, transforming this space into my dream garage over on the Schmuseum channel. A big thanks to all of you who are already part of this with the team as we transform it. But to Today is a blast from the past, a rewind back to 2010, the year that I started this very YouTube channel and my first ever sports car, the Aston Martin V8 Vantage Roadster. Now that was the first car that I was driving when I spoke to camera for the first time as well. It was the first car that I ever vlogged a road trip and an adventure in. It was the first car that we ever named the Schmimobile, a name that actually came from you guys and is now carried through to all of the cars in the collection and some of the cars that have been sold since. And also the car that inspired the purchase of the Vantage GT8, the final version of that generation of the V8 Vantage, the more track focused special, the limited edition to only 150 cars, the car that I took down to go and visit it about a month ago. But the V8 Vantage Roadster has always been a very special car to me and I've often wondered what became of it, where was it? And over the last, I would say year or two, I started to dig into it a little bit more, but alas to no avail. Well, by complete coincidence, a couple of months ago, the car happened to find me. I went down to visit it and meet with the owner, took it out for a short test drive. And well, it turns out he made me an offer that I couldn't refuse. And that car is now going to be returning to the garage. It will be wearing its original number plates and I can't wait today to go and pick it up. A very emotional feeling really, because that is where all of this began. So we're gonna be heading down with the AMG GT Black Series, a very different form of a car powered by a V8, it has to be said with almost, well, almost literally double the horsepower, which is kind of crazy, and a significant different appearance. The Vantage Roadster is a very elegant machine, but we'll get this out, get out on the road to go and pick it up today, and I cannot wait. It is really interesting driving this car already. It's very calm and it's very quiet and that is something we are gonna work on, which the Vantage Roadster does surprisingly differently. Of course, this is a victim of the latest legislation and OPFs and all that kind of thing, but we're basically taking it out onto the M25 on a busy afternoon, unfortunately, but a cruise around to where we're heading today, it's actually about two hours of current traffic, which is far from ideal, but to have the newest, most ludicrous technology, I suppose, Schmimobile, meeting up with the original, the one where it all began. <laughs> I can't believe this has actually happened. It wasn't planned. Even when I went to drive it, I didn't want to buy it immediately. I thought maybe this would be one that would be fun down the line if the owner wanted to sell it, maybe we could make it happen. But he came back with an offer and I basically said yes, and here we are. I've not done much by way of an inspection. I know it's had name dealer services, but I'm basically just buying it because it is what it is and no other one would be better. You know, often when you're going to look at a car, you would want to check everything and check out multiple different options. But in the case of this, if it's not this one, it's no Vantage Roadster, so this is what we're going for. Welcome to the UK, the land of the traffic jam. We've been stuck in this for ages. This journey should be an hour and a quarter on Google Maps, about 60 something miles each way. We've been driving for nearly that we've still got an hour and a half to go so it's going to be the best part of three hours in each direction and unfortunately that seems to be quite normal and people in the cars behind us are all out of their cars so engine off 
enjoy some summer air and uh, yeah, itching with excitement, but we're not going anywhere. And here it is then, we are gonna pull in alongside what is now my Vantage Roadster again. <laughs> I love that car. Glacial blue in the sunshine. Fantastic, we've made it. Let's go have a better look. Well, this is it. Here we are, meet the new addition to the collection, the return of the first ever Schmiemobile, my former Aston Martin V8 Vantage Roadster. Exactly where I came to take a look at it about a month ago, looking stunning in the sunshine. And we've actually got a bit at the moment of beauty and the beast, I think we could say. Two very different V8s, the twin turbo flat plane crank in the GTBS, and in this, the glorious naturally aspirated engine that makes a wonderful sound. We'll be hearing a lot of that, but the combination of this bright glacial blue paintwork with the multi-spoke silver wheels, the dual tone interior that we have, it's called Sandstorm, the cream finished with the navy blue for the dashboard and the buttresses and the areas all around. This is a very good looking car. To be honest, seeing it now brings back so many memories and now it's going to be coming back with us to the garage. I'm going to be driving this back home for sure, but there are things about it that when I got back behind the wheel last time I came out to see it, all of the sounds, even that as it's priming, for example, were all instantly flooding back the memories, the sound of the roof folding up and down, even the small defects you could say there's a small nick on the passenger seatbelt for example that was back when I owned this car originally we didn't manage to find the switch down in the footwell have a look for that a little bit later on but this car is really very very nice and it's going to be returning now at long last to the garage as I said I was looking for it for a while I didn't know what had happened where it had gone but we were able to run using the publicly available checks to see that it was still out on the roads but without knowing exactly where it was just that it wasn't being driven all that much and in fact it's now done 31,000 miles but I drove it from 3,000 miles I bought it when it was about nine months old up to 19,000 miles so still to this date I'm the person that did the most mileage in this car so many fond memories traveling across the continent with it down to Monaco over to Paris with Alex Smolik going to some of the early events and really this was the car that for me made it possible to attend some really special events to take it on dodgeball rally to chase the Gumball 3000 and to shoot so many videos without which the Shmi 150 channel wouldn't be what it is now that is where it all began and the car is now coming home. So we need to go in to finish off all of the paperwork to do the transfers, then it will be time to hop inside and take it back to the Museum. It's all done. This is my new car. The Vantage Roadster is back. Words I cannot believe I'm saying, but today that car comes back home to rejoin the collection. We've just been doing all of the paperwork to transfer the ownership of the car, which these days you can do online on the government website. It is very, very easy, almost too easy, just filling in a few forms. I then, as the buyer, have to tax it, which I've done for the time being under the previous owner's registration before I retain that, return it to him. And then this car, you might have guessed is getting back the plate that it had when I owned it 87 TB is returning for the first Schmiemobile for the Vantage Roadster I've also got all of the different documents and things here that have gone with the car and in fact inside this pack are even servicing invoices and receipts that I gave to the person who bought the car from me who then gave it to the person that I've just bought the car from so I'm getting all of those back we've even got here on the backup key the Broughton's tag I bought it from Bentley Broughton's which is now next door to what is now Lamborghini Pangborn where I'm ordering my Hurricane STO and that will be delivered in a couple of months. So this car came from the same place over 10 years prior to where I'm getting my STO, which is kind of crazy. We've also got the original ECU, the glass key, and I had remembered, oh, nearly dropped the leather pouch, that it has a little chip on the corner. That's just something that had happened on the previous owner before me. I remember that through to today. We've got the tracker tags, we've got the instruction manual, leather bound book that actually fits just into the glove box. It's the exact size to do so. But let's come through to open this and to start it for the first time back under my ownership to just enjoy the noise and feel of this car. It feels special. Now, 31,000 miles, as I said, pop this into here. Let's have a start up. Oh yes. This is a really surreal moment. I didn't think it would happen, but here I am in my Vantage Roadster. That means I own technically two Aston Martin Vantages. This is the one where it began. This is where the whole story began for me. My 
obsession, you could say, with sports and supercars began in this seat, with this very car, with those early adventures, with those early memories, and now the journey continues. It comes back to the garage. How cool is this? Back at the wheel of what is again my Vantage Roadster. I still can't believe I'm saying that. Driving roof down for the moment, but very shortly that's going up because it is about 30 degrees Celsius today and I'm British and that's way too warm for me, but a lovely day to collect a very special car like this, to be cruising along now through the countryside, roof down, absolute heaven. Now this car has the sport shift gearbox, which is not exactly the fastest thing by modern standards in a world where we're spoiled with dual clutch transmissions, but at the era of this car, and remember it's 12 years old, it is the oldest car that I currently own, although maybe in the future we'll be adding some more classics to the collection. For the time being, this is the sport ship. You can have it with a six-speed manual or with this six-speed automated manual where you still need to fluctuate the throttle. You need to do a clutch learn procedure when you start the car up. These things I remember from back at the time when I, when I had it. It feels completely familiar. It feels like it never left the garage, to be honest. It feels it feels like, I don't know, it feels like 2012 again when I sold it to buy the R8 V10 Spider. Now a lot of people ask me all the time, what, which cars would I buy back? Are there any cars I regret selling? And I don't regret that I sold this because at the time I sold it to purchase the R8 and then the 12C and I didn't have the funds to keep every car. I was financing the cars and just move from one into the next. So no regrets that I sold it, but absolutely over the moon that I've been able to buy it back. I think that is the, like for me, this is something I never thought could possibly happen. But knowing the history and the story behind this car, it's just, it's just epic. And behind me at the moment is the GT Black Series, which looks ludicrous on the road. It's insane. And um, yeah, I kind of hadn't really noticed because I'm so engrossed in what's going on with this one. But yeah, roof down. I apologize if it's windy. This is what it's about. This is a special car. And I can't believe this has come together. <laughs> There's a lot more of that to enjoy, but here we are. It's done, it's coming home. Well, I'm getting a little bit hot, so it's time to do the roof, which you can do while you're driving, gently, carefully. I don't think you can go very fast in here, but uh, fast enough that I can get out of the direct sunshine because my word, it is toasty today. There we go. That wasn't too hard, actually. That worked nicely. A little message on my dashboard saying roof movement complete. As we make our way through the bumps and potholes of Guildford at the moment to join the road back towards London and the garage. Seriously, it's, it's mad. I, I know this is by far not the most expensive or special car in its own right to add to the garage, but it's what it represents and what it means that really stands out. Just listen to this. What an exhaust note. This was a proper era of engines, my era of engines. And that's actually what sold this car to me so much at the beginning. That sound is awesome. <laughs> like I said, not the quickest shifts in the world but nonetheless, a lot of fun and a very, very, very cool sound and just feel to be back in this thing as now we're probably going to be descending upon the traffic jams again, back around the M25 towards base. Traffic here in the UK at the moment is just, I, it's atrocious. It's so bad. It takes so long to get anywhere. Any 50 mile journey, you're just doomed to a couple of hours. You need to leave so much time. There's also a new Bentley Continental GT behind me as well as the GT Black Series, making for quite the view in my rear view mirror at the moment. It's time to get back on the road. The GT Black Series is not the loudest thing in the world. This also isn't that crazy loud until you start doing that. Right, thumbs up, off we roll. He says it would be helpful if I popped it into gear. <laughs> right, let me close the window and head back out onto the A3 on this lovely afternoon. It's really interesting though how, this is 12 years old as I've said more than once in this video, but it still looks and feels much more modern than that. <laughs> and the G 
GT Black Series ahead, I can't get over the size of that wing. Look at it. The way it extends out right the way to the arches, as high as the roof, and it's a fairly reasonably high car. Just madness, just absolute madness. It also looks really cool in Batmobile spec in the satin black. Like really, really, really cool. I'm sorry, as I've said many times to those of you who will be bitterly dismayed that I'm gonna change the color of it. I like my cars in bright colors, but that does look pretty cool. Thankfully, the journey back has actually been significantly smoother than the outbound journey. Still a little bit of traffic, but not as bad as it was for the drive around in the other direction. Nonetheless, I still can't get over being back at the wheel of this car. Yes, it feels a little bit older now. Obviously, everything is a little bit more worn and it needs a serious cleanup. <laughs> I think that's my first probably spot in the new car. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> anyway, we'll get to all of that. There are a few things I'll show when we get back to the garage that I want to do to this to, in a way, restore it and bring back its former glory, to make it feel very new again, to preserve it. I don't think I'm gonna do huge numbers of miles with this going forward. That's not ever what this car is gonna be about, but it will sit in the garage and every time it will just bring back these memories for me. And it's such a personal, emotional thing so much more than it is for driving it. I, this doesn't make any sense at all. I fully appreciate, but I suppose anybody out there who's ever regretted selling their first or a really special car to them can probably appreciate that feeling. And having so narrowly missed my first ever car, the Renault Clio, which as you might know, I own the wreck of because after it had been involved in an accident and written off by insurance and scrapped, we did manage to find it in the scrapyard and bring that back. So I do own that, but this is very different because of course this still had an active registration. It now has my name again on the registration for the second time, which amusingly does actually add a second owner in terms of the documents, even though you're the same person at the same address who owned it before, obviously having bought it originally 11 or so years ago. It was in November 2010. I won't forget it. I was so excited, beyond excited. I'd sold my Audi S5 Cabriolet. I was going to pick up my first Aston Martin. I've now if you count it as another car, because like I say, from a documentation point of view, it does count as another owner, a new purchase of a vehicle. I've had this, I've had the Vanquish, Volante, the GT8, and this again. At the same time, my dad's had his V12 Vantage and DB11 as well, so yeah, good connection with the Aston Martins. I, I'm just in dreamland, just being at the wheel of it, even just cruising along. It's a nice car, there are no crazy noises. It's not rattling away or being uncomfortable. It's lovely, it's genuinely lovely. It's home. The Vantage Roadster is here at the Schmu Museum with I think 13 of the Schmu Mobiles now in total. Currently three that are absent. The Taycan, which would be plugged in over there, is currently at home because I came in with the BMW M3 today. The GT500 is still over in Miami in the USA. And the SLS Black Series will be back pretty soon to get it together for the first time with the GT Black Series. But this this is epic. The glacial blue under the lights here at the garage. In fact, the first time I've seen glacial blue with cerulean blue because this really set the theme for the Shmi 150 branding over the years. It led to the wrap that I did for the McLaren 12C originally, which then became the same wrap on the Morgan three-wheeler on the Abt RS6 and led to the cerulean blue on the 675 LT and on the Senna and for the Topaz skin on the AMG G63 as well. But this looks lovely it's such a nice car there are plenty of things though that need to be rectified more of which is going to be on the Schmuseum channel I think it's more of a Schmuseum story what's going to be happening with this car things like wheels tires leather seat belts various bits that need to be restored reworked new plate of course and everything to do with that car to make sure it just retains its glory as time goes by today though is a little bit of a pinch moment, really. This is, this is so exciting. As I was saying, it's the emotional angle of it. It's how special this particular car is to me. Not just any Vantage Roadster, but my first sports car, the first Schmimobile, and now here with all of the others that have really followed on because of this, because of this very car a decade or so ago, now reunited 
and brought back to the channel. Yeah, this is really for me a moment. I'm just gonna sit here and look at it for a while and enjoy re-owning the Vantage Roadster. So thank you very much for your support, guys. Thank you for being part of this journey, especially those of you who joined way back with that car as and when. It's back, it's here, it's a Schmimobile again. But that's it for this time. Thank you very much for watching as always. Make sure to check out the Schmuseum channel for more with this very shortly and what we're going to be doing with it. That's it for now though. Thanks for watching as always guys and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.